We have Coach Kiffin to conclude the day, and he will go straight to questions. Welcome, Coach. We Thank will go you. on the front row here to your left. Coach Kiffin, uh, just talk about being back at SEC Media Days, like you said earlier, uh, first time in, I guess, about 12 years. And talk about being a head coach going back to Tennessee this year. I, I know you're probably looking forward to that. Yeah, uh, I was just on with Paul Feinbaum, and so he was saying he'll be at the game in, in Knoxville. So that'll be exciting to go back there. Uh, we had an exciting year there, and uh, I've said it before. Uh, I, I love the fan base there, very passionate, and it's a special place. And um, so it'll be exciting to go back there. We'll go to your right on the second row. Coach John Wilson with the KBTX TV and College Station. Does it seem like it has been since 2009 that you were at SEC Media Days, and what is this day like being back here? Well, yeah, I really hadn't thought about it till the plane here and then kind of did the math 12 years and I was right with Knox and I guess he just would have just been born uh, right before that. So it's been a while, 12 years, you know, to think that went to third head coaching job since that, it would be a lot, let alone in the middle of that, you know, to go win a national championship and work for the best coach in the history of was getting ready to maybe say of all sports um, and to learn from him. So it's been a crazy 12 years. We'll go to your left on the second row. Hey, Coach Jacques Doucet, WFB in Baton Rouge. Um, can you share your relationship with Ed Ogeron over the years, uh, the ups and downs he's had at Ole Miss, USC, Tennessee, and, you know, has the greatest team ever two years ago, and now he's, you know, fighting adversity again? Yeah. Um, you know, got to work with Coach O as an assistant and really learned from him. You know, he was the recruiting coordinator for Pete Carroll at the beginning. I was 24, 25 years old uh, as the tight end coach. And, you know, got to learn from him and see the great classes that we signed there at USC and how that got going. And he was obviously a big part of that. And then later on, you know, to flip it around and, uh, you know, to come with us to Tennessee and then to USC. You know, I love Ed, uh, very passionate, as you guys all know, but an awesome person and very close friend. And nobody outworks him, that's for sure. We'll go to your right on the third row. Coach, Mike Lucas, KXTV and College Station. I know you guys didn't play A&M last year because of some COVID issues, but you did prepare for them. When you looked at the tape, what did you see in the defense and especially going against Mike Elko in previous years? What kind of a Mike Elko defense present? Well, I thought they did a lot of things and really well. Um, premier players, you know, very talented roster. Um, you know, I remember, you know, looking at the front saying, hey, this is going to be very challenging. And then I don't know how long we prepared until, you know, we found out we didn't play. But um, great program. Head coach that, uh, you know, is, is one of been one of the better offensive minds around for a long time and quarterback developer. So that'll be a big challenge for us. Coach to your left on the third row. Hey coach, Nick Niehaus, WABT TV in Jackson, Mississippi. Obviously you've talked a lot about NIL could be a huge recruiting advantage for certain schools. I'm just curious in these conversations with recruits, how relevant is the conversation about NIL opportunities at Ole Miss? Well, it is, you know, it's a part of recruiting now. And so we're in the beginning of that. And I think we're gonna learn a lot over a year, uh, you know, what happens at all the different places and the compliance aspect of it. And I mean, just if you guys that were in there, you know, learning the press conference that Coach Saban said, Bryce has made a million dollars already. Um, you know, it's, it's wild, you know, it's, we're professional sports. I mean, because we really have free agency, too, now. Ryan Hennessy, MEC 13 in Birmingham. Uh, when you fly back into Alabama, can you kind of touch on the memories that you've had here and kind of the memories with Nick Saban as well? You touched on a great compliment, one of the best of all time. Tell me a little bit about what it means to come back here. Well, I think, you know, I've been able to be part of, you know, two historic programs, you know, in the midst of great runs, um, I think. Alabama 
I want to say like 26 straight games we'd won, you know, being there with Coach Saban, uh, and 34 straight at USC at one point. So, you know, just been amazing to be part of those runs. But I always say you don't realize when you're in them. And I did a better job at the Alabama having learned from the USC. And I would talk to Sark or Matt Liner or Reggie Bush and say it all down. We really didn't know how special it was when you're in it. And so the Alabama one, having learned that, I think I appreciated it more while I was in it. But um, that, that's what I remember about it. Just so many great coaches and great players. I mean, you turn on NFL games are left and right, or you know, I go to the national championship game and and see so many guys up in a in a suite, you know, NFL players that you know were part of those teams, and in just three years, and it was really cool, and it was cool to be part of the shift of Alabama, um, going from a premier defensive program to a program that now you see recruits at the highest level on offense and defense, because now you can go there and. You know, you can have a lot of stats and score a lot of points and, you know, um, be cutting edge offensively. And so sometimes you got to be careful of part of the problem you create because now you got to go recruit against it where before it was, you know, wasn't easy, but at least you had a chance before because offensive players, you know, they, if you were going to go there, you know, you were going to play in, you know, a very different offensive system than – and what's going on now. Coach, to your left on the first row. Coach, Jake Nichols with Sports Illustrated Volunteer Country. Can you speak a little bit? Um, you, you touched on the banter and they were on Twitter. Can you speak a little bit to your relationship with uh, Tennessee fans on with Vol Twitter? And then also just kind of the welcome you expect back in Neyland Stadium. And do you think that we could see black jerseys? I didn't hear the last part. It was. Do you think we could see uh, black jerseys from Tennessee as well in that game since you brought it back against South Carolina? Oh, black jerseys, sorry. Well, I don't think I'd have a lot of say in what jerseys Tennessee's gonna wear. Um, so that'll be exciting to go back there. Uh, I've been back there as an assistant coach. I, I don't know, I can't predict it. I feel like it will not be welcoming, but a little bit better than it was last time as an assistant coach. It was definitely not welcoming. <laughs> um, so it's a passionate fan base. Um, I loved our year there. And, um, you know, so it'll be exciting to go back in there. That is a special place, special university, special stadium, special tradition. And like I talked about, when you're in championship runs, you appreciate it more later on. I think the same thing there, you know, is, um, you know, you look back to what a special place that is. To your right, right coach on the second row. Hey, coach, right here. Uh, Cassidy Hill with Gator Bait Magazine. Going back to the first game last year against Florida, Dan told us that after the game you told him, you know, this isn't the SEC I remember or the one I left. How much do you think that game sort of set the tone? What do you remember about it, and how much did it set the tone for how the SEC has changed? Well, I, you mentioned the first game, how the SEC has changed. I mean, it's, it's, it's totally changed. You think 12 years ago coming in here and, you know, as head coach of Tennessee and you play Alabama and it's 12 to 10. You know, there's one touchdown combined between the two. And then, what, I guess 11 years later, last season, uh, play Alabama and I don't know, however many it was, most points, most yards ever in the history of an SEC game uh, between the two same two head coaches. So I just think that's – how things have evolved, and there's still a lot of great defensive players in the SEC that you got problems preparing for every week. So it's not like it's you know some conference that can't play defense. It just happened to be a, a run of a great year of offensive players, and you saw a lot of them in the draft. Coach to your left, third row. Hey, Coach. It seems like that uh, proposed 12-team playoff format's inevitable. I'm just curious your thoughts on on that. I think it's exciting, more people, uh, more opportunities, exciting for fans to have. And, and the more you have, then the better chance of having a true champion. You know, I've said it before. What if you only had the NCAA basketball tournament and you only had the four number one seeds? How many times would the champion have been wrong compared to what happens now? And 
or one year when I spoke on this, you know, the committee, that's a hard job. How are you going to decide who the best teams are? And they decided who the four best teams were a few years ago and is one, two, three, four, and then four beat one, three beat two, um, you know, and four won the whole thing. So uh, it's hard to do. And so if you put more, more teams in there, you got a better chance of getting the right one. Two final questions, front row to the right. And last thing on that too, I think it, you know, it gives a smaller school a chance too, you know, that just has some unbelievable run some year that, you know, it seems like now they can't get in. Hey coach, Chase McCabe, 1025 The Game in Nashville. Uh, you've always been yourself, had a personality and, and, and shown that with this new era of college football, whether it's name, image and likeness or what have you, how important is it for the players to do the same and, and, and be themselves and not so robotic like we've seen at times? Well, I think that's how we run our program. Just like on the Feinbaum show when he was talking about Twitter and how I do it differently. And I said, well, you know, I'm more like a normal person and more my, I'm more myself instead of, oh, well, you can't be like this. And that's how I think our players are and how we want them to be. We don't want them to be robots. Um, you know, we don't want them to be, you know, so programmed that they have to be this certain way. You know, we want them to learn and grow and be themselves. So I think this helps out. Last question on your left, second row. Hey, Lane, Tyler Martin, Alabama Central. You kind of touched on it. You kind of led the way at Alabama with the offense revolution across the league. And I think last year the, the best scoring defense was 19 points a game. In your estimation, I know defense is a big focal point for you guys this year. What, how do you define what is good defense? Wow. Um, I, I've changed on that after last season. I don't even, if we're under 40, I'm excited. So <laughs> I might be the wrong person to ask on that subject. Uh, we struggled, obviously, last year. And like, I've, like I said earlier in this, it's a product of us not playing well, product of a all-SEC conference schedule and a year of great offensive players. So, you know, I, now in defense of, of our defense, Moving forward also, you know, when you play like we do on offense, that's not ideal for the numbers to be low over there because we're just playing to win. I don't care what the score is. But the way that we play offensively, we put our defense in tough spots at times because if you're going to play, if you're going to play this way, you know, you're going to have some times where you go three and out and they're right back on the field because we're not huddling, we're not going slow. So we don't do that because of stats. We don't do that. You know, except for we think that's the best way to win. And, you know, I know everybody will point to, well, Alabama went slow on offense. Well, you got four first rounders or whatever it was, you know, that did, you can go slow. Um, I think that going fast gives you advantages. Okay, Goats, thanks very much. All right, guys, thank you.